I'm Amanda, and this is Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. Welcome to today's episode. Today I have Caitlin Bentley. She is the crafty creative mind behind Feral Notions. If you don't know what that is, it's because she used to be whip stitch handmade. Um, she's the one who makes all the sparkly, gorgeous rulers. Um, she has some fun stickers on her site, some fun t-shirts and, and sweatshirts, but she just has such a great creative perspective and chatting with her was so much fun. She's a spay and neuter vet a couple days a week on top of creating these gorgeous, shiny, sparkly acrylic rulers for us to beautify our quilty spaces. If you don't know about Caitlin, you'll know now and you'll become a fan in a heartbeat. So I hope you enjoy this episode. And in the meantime, go shop her beautiful rulers and let's get into it. Well, hello there. I'm here to ask you to go check out my merch. I love it. <laughs> I design everything myself and choose the best products for you. So please check it out. It's nygqs.printify.me. That takes you to my little pop-up shop. Everything's print on demand. So you can choose your size, your color, your style, and it will be sent right to your door. No middleman. You just go. So check out nygqs.printify.me for some Not Your Granny's Quilt Show merch today. Also, while you're at it, you can go check out the Patreon for Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. You just go to patreon.com slash Not Your Granny's Quilt Show, where you can have access to me, um, the quilty community. And if you become a paid patron, you'll receive a Not Your Granny's Quilt Show logo sticker and and exclusive early access to the week's episode. So go check it out. Join that Patreon. Let's all get together and support the show. Thanks. And now on to the episode. Welcome to the show, Caitlin. How are you? Uh, thank you. I'm doing so well. I'm so happy to be here. I love yeah. your podcast. Oh, thank you. That makes my heart so happy. <laughs> um, well, I'm just, yeah, I'm so excited. I like loved your work and I eyeball your stuff all the time. I haven't bit the bullet to get any yet because I'm like, do I need another ruler? But I'm probably, you know, you always the- need another ruler. But- yeah. <laughs> right. I know. I know. I talk myself out of buying myself things a lot. But um anywho, um <laughs> so for those who don't know your face, you are the maker behind what was whip stitch handmade, but now is feral notions. Yes. So yeah. super sparkly, glittery rulers and binding winders and. Oh, not that's Stitch Supply Co. I don't make oh. binders. Yeah. Okay. I know. So People have asked and I'm like, no, no, okay. no, I don't do that. But I don't. Perfect. And I thought about making them, but I don't like want to step on their toes. But okay. yeah. So just the rulers. Just the rulers. I have thread. Um, seam gauges, the value viewers, mm. and now um, little thread cutters. Right. Little okay. Cutters. Okay. It's like, it all has like very similar vibes. So I'm just like lumped yeah. them together in my head, but thank you for clarifying that. And for oh, yeah. those listening, they'll appreciate it, I'm sure. But um, so, but before we talk all about that, I want to know how you got into the quilty world in the first place. Yeah. So I, um, I'm a late in life quilter. Um, I started after I had my son in 2018. Um, okay, my I have a big dog in here, and he just started snoring. So That's okay, <laughs> That's I can't hear it. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he, he has to get his like 22 hours of sleep a day. Um, and uh, yeah, I had my son in 2018, and um. I had a lot of postpartum depression and Mm -hmm. anxiety and um, I took a class with a friend just to learn how to make um, a log cabin block. And this is at Craft South in Nashville, Mm. uh, which is Anna Maria Horner's shop. Yeah. Um, And loved it. I'd always like admired quilting from afar. I've, I've been a knitter and all kinds of other crafts forever. Um, 
but you know, you're like, oh, I could never, it's tiny little pieces and so complicated. And then you start it and you're like, no, it's, it's not, it's all these cool, like tricks of geometry and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so I just got really into it and it kind of became a little creative practice I could do when like kind of so many things felt out of my control mm-hmm. um, with motherhood and my mental health. And I also like started um, my pregnancy kicked off like a chronic illness for me, um, oh, no. which is, oh, it's a fun one. It's called it's called cyclic vomiting syndrome. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, I know. I'm like, that's the name tells you all you need to know. Uh, and, and it's actually, it's more common in kids, you know? So like kids get really excited or stressed out and then they puke. Yeah. Um, and it's just kind of like my morning sickness just like never went away. And I started mm-hmm. having these, like, you know, spend two to three days super sick. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I just assumed it was like food poisoning. Um, and then got it all checked out, got diagnosed. Um, and it's just like, it's really connected to stress and anxiety. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's, was just such a huge part of it was my mental health, um, in that. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of clung on to quilting as something I could do when, you know, everything kind of was crazy in my life. Um, yeah. And mm-hmm. I could, I got really into just um, learning a new technique all the time because I just love that feeling of like trying something and then it kind of works out. And um, yeah, and I think, you know, I had always been kind of a achiever, you know, academic mm-hmm. and I am a veterinarian. Um, and so that you know, and then you, you have a baby and you, you, you can't, you know, I, I just couldn't keep up, but I could kind of do that with quilting and, and, um, yeah, it was just like, and then I just started meeting other quilters, um, and making friends and having group chats with them and found just like such a wonderful community of creative and generous people. And yeah, so that's how I, started <laughs> that's awesome and ugh, I'm sorry to hear about the struggles like that's yeah. so hard and especially when your body's doing something that you're just like what is happening right now like yeah. and it's so crazy how much of the chronic illness and like I have some autoimmune stuff too and so just how much of that is linked to like anxiety and like yeah stress and like traumas and and so but I'm glad you got it figured out because that's Yeah. Well, and I think so much of like dealing with a chronic illness, especially at the beginning is just like the mental part of it, you know, that like grief and yeah, resistance and like, just like, is this the rest of my life? You know? Um, and I'm thankful I have it. It's much more manageable these days. Um, but I just, you know, I look back at my like journal entries from that time and it's just like, oh, it's just in so much mental pain. Um, yeah, you know, I'm doing much better now. So that's good. (laughs) Yeah. It's, I just, I feel for you because the mental part of like just dealing with all of it is just so hard. And so I just, anytime I hear somebody struggling, I'm like, sorry, I'm with you. I know what it's like, <laughs> you know, yeah. not your exact situation, but like, I, I can empathize and with the mental gymnastics it takes just to wake up sometimes. So, really? and well, and I'm glad you had quilting to kind of be an outlet for that too. Cause I think creating is, can be so healing, like mm-hmm. in, in your journey of healing, it can give you an outlet for, to make something beautiful when everything feels disgusting and ugly, like, yeah. yeah. And not to put words in your mouth, but it, for me, that's what it's kind of been like, like I can, with my decrepit hands that look like they're going to literally fall off my body because of all the eczema, like I can make something beautiful with them still like, yes. Um, so I definitely feel that, but glad you're here and glad you found your way to quilting. And how did you I guess, get to the idea of 
creating notions or making rulers and things. Yeah. So it's, oh, it, it's kind of been a journey. Um, so <laughs> I, you know, I'm a veterinarian and mm-hmm. I've always worked in animal shelters. Um, and then when I got sick and had my son and everything, I kind of needed to like reevaluate, kind of take a step back, go part-time. Mm-hmm. Um, and just really think about what, you know, I could handle and what I wanted my life to look like. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, I started selling quilts, um, and, and then I kind of realized like, I want to keep everything that I make. I don't want (laughs) to sell it. Um, and then I, I got really into ice dyeing. So I Mm -hmm. ice dyed fabric, um, and I sold that for a while. I made a little dye guide, um, of how to do it and different color combinations and sold that. And then I was also like selling, um, dog collars that I made and socks that I dyed in a local shop here. And they, um, it's a nonprofit for the arts and they, it's called terrain in Spokane. Mm -hmm. Um, and they put on a class every year called creative enterprise. And it's just like a business class, just for artists and makers and um okay yeah and it's really inexpensive and I kind of went in there and I kind of had this idea so I was just like (laughs) I was watching a lot of videos online of people using lasers to do different things and I was just like that acrylic is really pretty like like, I bet you could make cool stuff for quilting and sewing out of it um and so I took this business class thinking okay, I kind of want to do that. And I had this idea, like half my business was going to be selling vintage fabric and old sheets and stuff that I thrifted. Mm -hmm. And then half would be these notions. And when I took that class, I didn't even, I didn't even have a laser. I didn't even know if any of it was going to work. And it just kind of like crystallized everything. And while I was taking that class, I got my first laser secondhand, um, and started cutting rulers and it took a lot of like tweaking and figuring out, but sure. managed to work it out. And like less than a year later, I got my huge laser, um, which is, has to live in the garage cause it's so big and yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. It's <laughs> fun. How, like you can just have these little ideas on like just nudge them along. And usually, you know, if it, if it's a good idea, it kind of tends to work itself out if you just kind of keep taking steps towards it. Like, and it's so cool that they have that business class in Spokane to like, yeah, teach you how to make a business. And I think that is, that can be the trickiest part is like learning how to become a business when you don't really know much about it. And I mean, it sounds like you were selling things ahead of that. So you kind of knew the game of like, (laughs) yeah, figure out what's going to sell and what's not going to sell and yeah. Selling stuff that you love, but also are, are okay with parting with. Cause that's, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're making quilts and you're like, but I want to keep it. It's really hard to put a price on it and let it leave your door. So yeah. Well, and half the battle is just like getting started and just getting out there and putting your stuff out there and I think sometimes you just need that kick in the butt of like, no, you can do it. Cause in that class, they had us give, um, we, every week we had to do our one minute business pitch and we Mm. had to stand in with the class and just give our pitch. And they helped us like craft it and refine it over and over and over. And then at the end of the class, we had to give like a 10 minute presentation in front of a group of like local business owners yeah. um, and like receive feedback and questions and stuff. And so that was just like, you know, it's terrifying, but <laughs> really, yeah. really useful. Uh, and, you know, and I think it like helped prep me for quilt con because, you know, people would come by the booth and be like, what is this? And <laughs> you can give your like 20 second explanation. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And like, I don't think a lot of 
those of us who start creative businesses necessarily take those steps to like learn those aspects of business. And I mean, you, it's, it's kind of important knowledge to have of like, what is your synopsis? Like, how do you summarize your business in one minute or 20 seconds? Like it can be tricky, but like, I think it's important, especially now because our attention spans are so short. <laughs> like you have to grab people's attention amongst all the noise on social media and online. And just everybody has a shop. Everybody's brother or sister has a business and, and which is great. Like, I love that aspect that like we can niche in and find the thing that speaks to other people that also speaks to us and, and kind of make that work for our lives. But those little details can become the difference between a successful business and something that fails. And so that's really cool that, that you found that and that it's been helping you, you know, with your business and even still helping. I mean, QuiltCon was crazy. So yeah, of course, (laughs) like having that little like 20 second blurb to, to tell somebody something while you've got their attention is really great. Yeah. Yeah. As a small business owner, so much of it uh, is just marketing yourself Mm -hmm. and, you know, you have to do all of that yourself. I know sometimes I get really overwhelmed and I'm like, yeah, I'm one person. (laughs) I have to do email marketing and social media and produce all this stuff and work with shops. Um, Mm -hmm. But just like getting that like crystallized vision and having like a one page business plan is so, so helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's like the, the foundation you can keep going back to, or like the <clears throat> starting point of like, when it gets all overwhelming, cause I am the same. It's like, it's just me and my mom. I do all the social media, like for our quilting business, for the podcast, it's just me. So like I'm doing all of it for both things. And that's a lot. And it feels really overwhelming. So I can, like, I can relate to that. Like, okay, I have my, we have our goals. We have our our mission. Like, I just have to go back to that and remember like why we're doing what we're doing, who we are, like, cause it's so easy to get caught up in the, the like comparison game too, I think like, and I don't know how you experience that, but, or if you do, but it can be tricky to like, how do I stay true to my voice while selling what I want to sell and keeping up with the times and like the trends kind of, but also not selling out who I am. (laughs) Totally. Totally. And I just, I mean, my philosophy is always just like, it needs to feel good and right. And Mm -hmm. yeah, be somewhat enjoyable, (laughs) you know, like this, yeah, you just have to kind of have that like inner compass of, yeah, if it doesn't, it, if it doesn't feel right, we don't need to do it. Need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I think like, I don't know how, how it is for you either on this, but like my husband, and I always talk about how it just seems like when we're, when we're doing things that serve our higher purpose or serve our like long-term goals or some, you know, are in alignment. It just like seems to go really smooth. We don't meet a lot of resistance. We don't hit a lot of road bumps. And if we do, they're super tiny and manageable, but it's never anything that fully derails it, the, the train, so to speak. So I think in that same mindset, it sounds like you have that too. It's just like, if it doesn't feel right and it feels like you're pushing a dead body up a hill, like you should probably <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And just like, you know, so much of my business has been like moved toward by social media and just like, just don't take social media like too seriously. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, this is the internet. It's, I want my page to be a fun place, Mm -hmm. um, in an inclusive place. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I want the things I make to bring joy to people. Um, and so that just kind of guides, guides what I do. Yeah. I love that. And the stuff you make is joyful. It's so shiny. So like, yeah. I mean, how can you go wrong? I know. If you don't <laughs> Look at that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I want to talk about QuiltCon with you because yes. it was your first time vending, it was my first time attending ever. So 
that was just a whole different thing. But how was it vending? Like, did you sell a ton? Were, were you finding like that you had to sell yourself a lot more or were people just like, nope, I want that? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was insane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we sold a lot. Uh, we, we were so busy. Um, I had my friend Margo there helping me out. Um, she's, uh, my crafty friend I met from the internet. <laughs> she, she lives in LA. She's, um, magic hour maker on Instagram. Um, and she's like my emotional support person. Um, yeah, you gotta have those. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was just crazy. I just, you know, at the end of every day, we were just like, all right, let's go sit in a dark room. And <laughs> love is blind. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just not speak for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was nuts. Uh, the I didn't have to like pitch myself too much. And it, it really helped clarify some things for me. Um, you know, when I don't, I don't need to be all things to all people. And like the girls that get it, get it. Yeah. And the girls that don't like, that's okay. You know, you, maybe you're not, maybe you we're not for you and that's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cause I think sometimes people walk by and they'll make comments and like, and they don't realize like, I'm right here. Like oh I God. made everything that you're looking at and talking about. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, and and that I think was probably good for me too. Um, and it just made me realize like, you know, I, I'm not for everybody. I don't need to please everybody. People don't need to understand it. Oh my gosh. My favorite question was, um, multiple times we had people coming by and they were like, why, why, uh, <laughs> like, why are they sparkly? What does that help with? And I would just, we would just say like, mm, it's cute. And they would be like, like oh. <laughs> yeah. you're like, cause it looks good. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I came to learn, like if people were walking by and just kind of like staring and squinting at stuff, like, <laughs> like okay, well, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to like it. You, can um, you don't have to be here. <laughs> yeah. We can, we can walk by. But then the girls who were into it were like really into it. We had multiple people like come by one day and then recruit all of their friends and come by multiple times. And like, I didn't even have to sell anything. They would sell everything to their friends and strangers. They would just like show people all my stuff. Um, and that was just, so fun and just and so clarifying of like you know mm-hmm. who we are and the vision and um yeah. you know and even Margot had a good idea of like you know maybe we take some steps to like weed out the girls that don't get it faster mm-hmm. um which was something I hadn't even considered you know like <laughs> like ha- making stickers that have your pronouns on them or mm-hmm. like really mm-hmm. embracing like queer quilting community yeah. um, and that type of thing so just yeah you know because I don't we don't need to be in a space where we're you know trying to convince people to right. to get into it yeah right yeah because uh, like the people that love you will love you and they'll support you and they'll share with everybody and and they'll sell for you kind of Totally. Not that you're like, you do all my marketing for me, but it's (laughs) that word of mouth is so important. And Mm -hmm. so if you're spending your time chasing the customers who are going to look for reasons to not like you, you're better spending your time, like focusing on the things that you do love and you do support. So yeah, like pronoun, you know, pronoun pins or stickers and like letting people know that like, Hey, I'm here to support. I'm an ally. Like Mm-hmm. don't question that and then if you don't like that then you can skedaddle like you know or yeah. you can still buy my stuff and that's okay too like yeah you know like I'm I'm always you know kind of cool with being the um <laughs> the bridge friend you know like I, I'll be your outspoken liberal friend and you you know so you can know that we're not all monsters I don't know yeah 
We're not eating babies in the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so it was, it was so valuable for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Like when you're thrown, not thrown, cause you obviously chose to be there, but when you're in situations like that, how much you can learn about yourself. And like, mm-hmm. I was talking with someone about how I have, I get these like grand, I don't know if they're grand, but just these kind of like visions or ideas of like how I'm going to be coming into like a giant social situation like that. And then I'm just me. And those quickly, those like ideas quickly fade. I'm like, oh, right. I'm not like this ethereal creature who like floats in and everybody's like, oh, hello, Amanda. Like, um, so like taking the time to reflect and be like, okay, what did I learn about myself today? And like, about my business or my brand or how I'm approaching this. And I love to hear it that, you know, you're finding, you're finding ways to fine tune you and your business more from that experience. And like, it can be so hard to take on that criticism and Mm -hmm. know what to do with it. Like, it makes me cry every time, <laughs> even if I'm like, I'm a tough girl. And then I'm not cause I'm crying, but, yeah. <laughs> or maybe I am tough and I am crying at the same time. I don't know, but, but it is, it's information and it's just like, what are you going to do with it? So mm-hmm. we can take it or leave it, or you can use it to grow. And it sounds like you're choosing to grow, which is awesome. And I love it. And like I said, I stopped in your booth a few times and I was like, man, I really want those rulers. So <laughs> I'm going to buy some eventually. I just, you know, it's one of those things, but anyway, um, excuses. Right. But, um, and it was fun to see that your booth was full. Like every time I walked past it, there were always so many people in there, which is so good and exciting. Cause it's fun to see like, cause I followed you since before quilt con, like I've known about your stuff. So I knew it was there and to just see people that you follow and admire, like be successful is just so fun. So I loved to see that. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, Just, yeah, a wonderful experience. I'm definitely going to reapply and try to be back and yeah. um, Yeah. Just a, yeah, just a great group of people. It was wonderful. It was so fun. And your booth was so cute. Thank you. I loved all the fun (laughs) colors and yeah, just there just were, you know, I mean, all the booths were great. They had all like great stuff, but there just were certain ones that like stood out and yours was one of those that just like, Oh, there's that one. I love it. It's so cute. Like <laughs> easy to find. And that was, I think in the sea of everything, like the ones that stood out, it was like nice because it was like, you almost had like a beacon, like a, like a reference point for where you were or like to just kind of go, okay, where am I in this building? Like who's around me? You know, just like, yeah, (laughs) if you're anything like me and get stressed in social situations or crowds, like having those points of reference is so important for like calming myself. So yeah. Well, and I like lost several times, you know, you just like think you're walking down one aisle, but it was not the right aisle. And I did that multiple times, even just going to the bathroom. (laughs) I'm like, where? where am I? I lost my mom a lot of times. I'm like, where'd she go? <laughs> no. And I, oh my gosh. Every time I stepped out of that booth, I spent at least a hundred dollars, you know, <laughs> you're like, I'm going to just, dangerous. <laughs> just want to support you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it's so fun. I'm so excited to go back and see everything and everybody again and just experience it with, with some now experience in my, under my belt, like yeah. Like how to, is there, are there things that you think you'll do differently yet? Like as a booth, it, if you get in for next year or the year after, whenever you decide to go back. <laughs> yeah. Um, Margo and I kind of talked and made a list of stuff. I think I would love to have a larger booth next year, kind of like a double one, mm. um, and maybe have a little spot for people to test out the rulers Oh, um, yeah, so they can see like you really can see through them. I promise. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, yeah, just like maybe even expand and have some like special quilt con only products, like Mm. keychains and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and maybe even have some other like 
um, wholesale some other artist stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's some makers like that. I would want to have their like art prints there and mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And then maybe recruiting a couple more people to work it with me. Um, cause I would love to attend some of the lectures, yeah. and the events there. Um, but yeah. yeah, that's so cool. And it, it's fun to like, imagine what your future booth could be like, you know, it's mm -hmm. now that you've experienced it, I think having done some like, you know, holiday bazaars or, you know, just like different kind of markets and stuff. That's like the different iterations you can come up with are just, just kind of fun. Cause like to like revamp what you have, like you're still the same person. So people know to look for you, but to like change it up a little bit, makes the shopping experience, I think, exciting for consumers and like for your yeah. fans and your friends and people that want to come see you. Cause then it's like a new thing, a new facet of you that they get to see. Cause that's, you know, yeah. Just... And we rearranged it every day, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, especially once I had like Margo's vision and and she like had one morning where she just like ran to target before quiltcon and got all this stuff because i had laser um cut some displays and they were uh junk um oh. <laughs> just like oh, people no. would grab a ruler and it would just like teeter oh. uh, so i there's a lot more i want to do and just like make things a lot more like touchable i want people mm -hmm. to they can grab stuff and look at it and um play with it so yeah so yeah looking at that I have a whole Pinterest board of like booth ideas um so fun there's a whole world out there of of booth people so yeah <laughs> yeah it's like a whole thing it's so crazy <laughs> but so fun so do you are do are you planning to go to Phoenix I am yeah nice. I'm glad it'll be like a little bit closer this time. You yeah. know, like, do I want to drive down? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I know we were like, oh, are we going to, I was like, no, we're definitely flying. My friend, one of my friends was talking about coming with us, which I want her to. So that's exciting. But she was like, oh, how, how's the drive? I was like, we're not driving. I was like, it's probably, I think it's about 14 hours. And she was, I was like, and it's about 1100 miles from Boise. And she was like, what? And she Googled it. She's like, oh, Yep. No. Yeah. You're right. I was like, I know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, that is so far and like being East coast or, you know, kind of the South, like things are so much closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was just vast. Yeah. It's like, Oh, out here in the West, like <laughs> you have to drive 700 miles just to get to the nearest big city. And like, <laughs> You know, and I don't, I don't know that I want to do any drive where I can't bring a dog with me. You know, I yeah. have my, my big, scary dogs I have. And especially if I'm going to be alone. Yeah. 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 That's a, it's like <laughs> such a tricky planning thing. Cause yeah, it's like, if you want to have all your stuff, do you fly with it or do you have to drive with it? And then that's like an extra, extra days you have to add onto your trip just for driving, especially. Yeah. Cause you're like you're about seven hours from me mm -hmm. and I'm 14 hours from, from air or from Phoenix. So like, yeah, that would be like a three day thing. Yeah. No, maybe not. I mean, I, I complained <laughs> about how expensive it was to ship my crate of stuff over there. Um, but it might just be worth it. I mean, like once you factor in hotel, you know, mm -hmm large amounts of snacks um yeah, from gas always, stations always road snacks yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where I really lean into my like Red Bull problem yeah uh, road trips so yeah <laughs> they get expensive yeah. <laughs> I'm like where did all this like how do I spend all this money and I'm like oh gas station snacks oh, yeah the glass frappuccinos <laughs> whoops yeah <laughs> right like oh they probably shouldn't eat so many chips I don't know but it doesn't count road trip doesn't count yeah no never we, are, we always have a bag seat full of snacks it's fine <laughs> yeah. well so you've mentioned you're a veterinarian and how long have you been doing that um I graduated in 2014 um from Washington State so okay. I went there for both degrees um <laughs> and 
yeah, I've, I've been, I really fell in love with shelter work when I was in vet school and Mm -hmm. started doing that. I worked for Seattle Humane, um, right out of school, which wild because the CEO, while I was working there just came out, uh, murdered his wife and him himself and their five cats last winter. Oh my goodness. That was crazy. But then, um, I, applied for a job in Nashville and because I just wanted to get the heck out of Washington for a while Um, and we moved down there and Mm -hmm. I ended up working for the Nashville Mm -hmm. Municipal Shelter um, Mm -hmm. which is called MAC down there and loved it just wonderful wonderful boss Um, the medical director she's like wonderful veterinary angel um and the work and like the philosophy of that shelter like they did amazing work um and then the like some of the forensics cases I got to work on Mm. um were fascinating sad but very interesting um and I at that time I was finishing up I got a master's in shelter medicine from, um, university of Florida online. Mm. And then the pandemic hit and everything went crazy. Yeah. And we just decided like with childcare and everything, we decided to move up closer to family. So we moved back to Spokane. Um, and I started working, I do two days a week, um, at a spay neuter nonprofit, Okay. called Pet Savers here, which is awesome. Um, and we do 30 plus surgeries a day. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. And I love it. We last year did a little training with the ASPCA. Um, and yeah, it's been great. It's such a different world I I, you know I tell people oh I kind of have two jobs and they have literally nothing to do with each other (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) but it's it's been great yeah I love having that that team and group of girls I work with over there yeah well that's good work and like if you haven't if you're listening spay and neuter your pets like yeah yeah. please (laughs) it's kitten season is coming up Mm -hmm. and cats if your female cat goes outside, she will get pregnant. If you have a boy and girl cat, but they're siblings, cats are dirty little freaks. She will get pregnant. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And like, if you have a boy kitten, he will start peeing in your house. Um, and just get him neutered and it'll fix all that. Um, yeah. Do you follow Maddie, the badass quilter? Yes. She's a kitten foster and she's always like, please fix your animals, please. (laughs) I'm so tired. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. She, and like her proceeds from her sticker and t-shirt sales and stuff go to helping her fund her fostering. So that's awesome. That's really cool. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of work and I don't envy it of her, but I'm just like so happy that people are doing it. And yeah, if I brought fresh kittens into my house, my cat would be like, excuse me <laughs> excuse me I'm gonna go pee on your bed <laughs> yeah who do you think you are <laughs> bringing that into my house <laughs> yeah I know I want to start fostering kittens um I just worry my five-year-old would get like so attached and yeah have that time mm-hmm. um and we already have three cats so we don't really need more <laughs> yeah yeah it's tricky but well I'm glad you're doing what you're doing and as an animal lover I just think it's so important to we have to like they're animals, but if we're going to take care of them and have them be in our homes and be domesticated, then we also have to do other things to make sure that they're not out there overpopulating yeah, our spaces with yeah. too many babies. And we need to make it accessible too. You yeah. know, it's, you need to make it easy for people. Um, yeah. Cause sometimes even just transportation can be such a barrier for people just getting their animal to the clinic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. We're always working on, on stuff that way to, to make it easy for people to take care of their pets. Cause yeah. Yeah. Pets are, pets are family members. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, absolutely. 
That's so cool. And so then you find time to use your fun laser, which you you said you just got your Brit big new to you. And mm-hmm. that was about a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. I guess just about a year ago, got big red. Um, and she's like about four feet by six feet. Um, oh. and I can do like two by four foot sheets of acrylic in there. Um, and it's more powerful and it's faster than the one I was using before. Um, yeah. And I have it out in the garage. I have it. The nice thing is our garage is, um, solar powered from the previous owners installed solar panels. Oh, wow. And I have a smoke filtration, like HEPA system. So, okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to environmentally friendly. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to ask like, how is that like environmentally? Like what is, mm-hmm. yeah. Like what kind of, like, are you safe? Like, I don't, I know <laughs> yeah. like sometimes like with 3d printing, people are kind of, you know, can be concerned about the output. And, mm-hmm. um, so I just, yeah, I've never really like learned about what it entails to like cut, cut acrylic with lasers and like what that would be like. So yeah, it can produce some like kind of toxic fumes, but we have that filtration system set up. So we're catching all that. Um, nice. and it's, yeah, it's a pretty, it's not too loud of a machine. So yeah. Yeah. That's nice that you've got garage space that's available to be able to do that. It's so cool. Yeah. 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 I'm and- going to have a little workshop area in the garage and long-term plans to insulate it and mm-hmm. heat it. Um, cause in the winter time, um, well, you know what it's like up here <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, my iridescent acrylic really does not like the cold. It's very mm-hmm. sensitive and it likes to crack when it's cold. So, mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of been a frustrating winter with that, but eventually I'll get it heated so we can have nice warm acrylic and cut it. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> is it easy to source the acrylic? Like, do you get it? Do you have to order it from like, do you get it from the States? Do you have to order it from overseas? Some somewhere? I get from suppliers in the States and some I get from suppliers overseas. Um, and uh, I have a supplier in China where I get my iridescent stuff from in the confetti um, and then in the States, <clears throat> they, I get all the like colored frosted kinds. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And when I want to ask you about your value viewers, like how did you come up with that? Like I, cause you know, I'm used to like laying stuff out and then taking a black and white photo and, or mm-hmm. taking the photo and turning it black and white to find that. But like, do you still need to do that with those? Or is it just, you just wear it and you can see. No, you just hold it up and you can see yeah all those subtle differences in um light and dark and yeah you don't necessarily have to do the black and white photo anymore but but yeah yeah, it's easy that's so cool did you see them like I don't yeah like how did you come up with that I'm just like my mind is blown by them I was like what the hell this is so cool (laughs) (laughs) not my idea um but I've been I bought a while back um ones that came with a little set of, there's like a red one and a green one, just like okay. tiny little pieces of acrylic. And I was just like, you know, trying to look through with one eye and this tiny piece of acrylic and just kind of thought like, why don't I just make them shaped like sunglasses? And then I can just like hold it up and see with both eyes. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so smart. That's so smart. Cause it is, it's like, that's, that's one of the hardest parts of like pulling a quilt together like curating fabrics if you're not just buying everything out of a line and you're trying to put things together like which that's kind of what I do often is for clients I'm like pulling fabrics from all different places because they have they have a vision that I'm trying to translate for them and like mm-hmm. it's not just like I want this line of fabric it's like um I kind of want this and I kind of want this and I kind of want this and I'm like do these even go like I don't know <laughs> but that's like such a fun way and like yeah to like not have to take a picture and turn it black and white and figure it out like you can just see it right then and there yeah but that's such a it's such a cool idea and I love just like the 
it's, it's serving a need. And I think that's what businesses do or are supposed to do. Well, I think I know, I know that businesses are, <laughs> our goal is to, you know, fill a need or fill a hole in, in the goods and services realm of things. And so finding little things like that, that's like, oh, I could actually make this easier for people is like, yes, that's what we're doing here. Like, <laughs> and they're cute and hot pink. And like, why wouldn't you want to have that? You know? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Thank you. I know my son steals them like constantly. I have always find like three in his room. Yeah. <laughs> I would too, if I was five, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Shiny cool. stuff. I know he's always walking in here and being like, can I have this? And I'll just be like, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be the mom who says no, like that's rude. Like, no. Yeah. Like <laughs> use it on your quilt. Like, yeah, I have dreams of him someday wanting to sew with me and quilt with me and yeah, so we'll see. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> it's funny. Like I mean, I've, I've brought it up on the show before, but my niece, she'll, she's almost 11 and it's been kind of like a slow, she'll dip her toe in every once in a while. And she, but she's seen us doing this her whole life, you know, seen my mom and I quilting and, and making things for other people her whole life and made her quilts. And she helped my mom design her own quilt and she sewed it all together. Like she did such a good job too. I was like, damn girl, like you're better <laughs> at quarter inch seam allowance than I am. Um, <laughs> so and it's just fun to like kind of watch her curiosity peak here and there and like when she is like hey can I make this we're both just like yeah absolutely we like drop everything and like just help her because it's it's important that to us that you know at least somebody else in the family you know wants to do this with us or or just do it on their own it's like perpetuating the the quilty bug but hopefully he'll get into it at some point <laughs> well and how cool to have like a multi-generational thing that you do you know like that I I'm so jealous of people who's like parents and grandparents quilt and yeah they have that I watched like a TikTok of a family that where all the women get together and do like a quilting family reunion oh and, I saw that like doesn't that, doesn't that look amazing? Yeah. I want that desperately. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can get this little boy who's really into Minecraft and Pokemon and yeah, slowly percolate it into yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Kelly Fannin has, um, free, she offers like a lot of her block patterns for free and Minecraft like her Minecraft themed quilt is, um, on her blog. I, I used her, um, Harry Potter blocks for a client quilt re this yeah. like last winter. And so, but she has Minecraft. She has, she, I think she had some Pokemon she has like, and they're all kind of like square pixelated. So there's no funky shapes. Like yeah. the, the funkiest thing she does is like the flippant clip corners, snowball okay. corners. Yeah. But, um, you know, her Minecraft characters are so cute. Anyway, that might be a fun little adventure for him to yeah, I know. pick a block and work on it. And I'm gonna look that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you I'll send you the link because um it's like it's super cool and she's really good. Her directions are really good. So she uses lots of diagrams too, which oh, nice. I love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I just need the pictures. I don't need the words. <laughs> you know, I, that's, I'm working on an Elizabeth Hartman quote right now. And that's, I'm just like, I don't think I've even read any of the words, but <laughs> yeah, from the measurements. Yeah. Yeah. Which one are you making? Um, I'm doing the, the robot quilt. Oh. Um, and I did the dinosaur one previously and, oh no, I've done more. I've done the bear one mm. and and um the little baby penguins one cute. I know I love them especially for like kids and stuff yeah um, yeah. yeah we had a client ask us to make the pretty birds oh cool pattern and it was intense <laughs> but it turned out so beautiful and she loved it so much so I was just like it's worth it but it's like okay that's like a million dollars but that's fine <laughs> <sighs> it's they're beautiful, but yeah, there's like a lot of pieces. So I, 
kudos to you because I don't think I ever want to make another one of her patterns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like big blocks. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I always need to have like five projects going at once. Um, and I always have to have one that's like kind of a challenge that I can like pick up and put down. Yeah. Um, and that fits, fits the bill for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. It's going to be so cute that those robots are stinking cute. I love them. They are. They're really adorable. And they have like, it's been fun picking out what square to go in their bellies. Um, so you can use all different like patterned ones for that. So it's been fun. Yeah. And, you know, using a fabric that I made pants for him out of that. He came from home from the hospital in and um, yeah, just all different stuff from his, his little life. Yeah. yeah. That's so cute. I love it. I love like, you know, in our business, um, we make a lot of like memory and clothing quilts. And so it's always fun to like, be able to fussy cut like cute little kid clothes and like yeah. the cute stuff. Like we always save the pockets or like the little bows or, you know, just like the oh. cute little embellishments on the clothing to like put into it. Cause it's like, that's like the part that makes you love that little outfit. And like, and then you've got that memory of like, I don't know, like I never had my own babies, but I am the oldest and I have like younger, younger siblings and a ton of cousins. And like, I've just always been around everybody else's babies, which is great. Um, and you know, my stepsons are, they were older, but it yeah. was great. So anyway, I just, but I, it's like, even with my siblings, cause I was so much older. It's like, I feel like their mom in the sense, like of that, like, <laughs> remember the outfit my mom and her are like, Oh my God. Like so small. Yeah. <laughs> like remember their tiny little da da da. And she's like, yeah, that's so oh. cute. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. And like we start doing that as you know, people send us their clothes. We're like, like, <laughs> so like, so <laughs> like we need to calm down. It's fine. But anyway. <laughs> but then it's like so fun for the little kids too. I think like we just made some for. We had made two quilts for like the, this lady and her sister-in-law from some baby clothes for themselves. And then their kids were like, we want quilts out of our clothes. And so they sent us more clothes and we made quilts for each of the kids out of their own clothing, like oh, cool. their own baby pajamas and stuff. And I'm like, what a fun idea. Cause it's like, that's theirs, you know? Yeah. It was their clothes. It was what they were dressed in on their own little bodies. And Ooh. why wouldn't they want that? So yeah. anyway, that's so fun. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Do you have other like crafty hobbies besides like sewing and making really cool freaking rulers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knit mm. like like a lot. Um I've gotten recently really into needlepoint. Um mm. and I got I have this cat needlepoint that I'm working on. It's there's this company called airman tapestry hmm. and they're like from england and i have a my grandma was always doing needlepoint and like oh. looking at the same time um <laughs> <laughs> uh and yeah i love it because you know i like i admire cross stitch from afar but i it's too much counting mm -hmm. um and so needlepoint is just perfect because it's it's already just like painted on there for you um I have like a whole dream of having a couch that's like full of needlepoint cushions um yeah. and then gosh what else do I do crochet yeah uh, I always have like aspirational crafts that I want to do someday you know you have like yeah. a bucket list mm -hmm. um oh I've started spinning um oh. so like making my own yarn and then I have a big loom I need to get on top of figuring out how to work <laughs> yeah so I, yeah that's really fun I also crochet so I'm just always curious like what other because it's like you're not just a quilter like <laughs> no <laughs> you have a gateway <laughs> hobby like come on what is it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yarn crafts are so fun. I love, like, I just love making stuff with yarn and I don't do it as much anymore because I'm always quilting, but it's definitely there as like my comfort. Like if I don't know what to do with fabric or I don't know what to sew, I'll just grab my, my crochet, pro whatever project I've got going on and 
Yeah. It's like, there's like variations of like concentration that you do for crafts. Like quilting, I feel like is like fairly high up there. Mm -hmm. And then there's like the sit on the couch crafts and watch a movie and do, Yeah, you know, you need to have, you need to have many across the whole spectrum. (laughs) You need like a mind cleanser one. And that's why, yeah, I feel like knitting and crocheting is that kind of like that repeated stitch is like, okay, my brain can just like go blank and I yep. can just focus on counting stitches or I can just keep going and not count and end whatever. up with whatever I get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, frogging is the worst though. Like, oh yeah, painful. I try to avoid it at all costs, but sometimes you just have to start over. And <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, not one much for making a gauge swatch, which I'm sure would avoid most of my problems but I just I can't do it I want to start yeah. um so yeah that's the same cool for me <laughs> yeah I'm the same way I'm like swatch what I'm gonna yeah. gonna, I'm gonna go for it <laughs> oh I go on vibes I don't go on measurements <laughs> yeah. like I'll stop when I like it I don't know <laughs> yeah. I don't know it looks big enough for my body who knows yeah, I'm just like mm, it's good <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god that's so funny well, I, oh, I can't see. Oh yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about your rebrand because you just changed your business name, which is great. I think we all have to go through different, you know, <laughs> iterations of whatever we're doing. And so, but what led you to do that? Was it just, was it a long time coming or? Uh, well, there's another maker who uses the name whip stitch mm-hmm. and she's been using it much longer. And she reached out to me and we had a discussion and, you know, I was like, eh, I probably just need to change my name. If I decided to like fight this, like it, it probably wouldn't work. Cause she, you know, she's been using it much longer. Mm-hmm. Um, and it probably would cause confusion for people. Um, so and it, you know, I needed a name that more encompassed what I do and what I want to get to. Um, cause the name whip stitch handmade just kind of came out of like, you know, that was my Instagram handle when I started quilting. Mm. Uh, and so feral notions, I think just really encompasses more of the, the things I make and kind of the vibe and, attitude of it and it kind of ties into my other life as a vet so yeah yeah it, it's uh it's been a and I had so much fun making the new logo too I um learned how to do like a script on procreate that like looks like a ribbon yeah. um that was really fun to do so I saw your like your video of of you making it. And I was like, Oh, that's so cool. I'm like, I keep seeing all these things about procreate and like all these things. And it's like, as I'm leaning more into like designing like stickers and like things for merchandise, like it's like, I'm so, you know, I have Canva and I love Canva, but I'm like, Oh, there's so many other things I want to be able to do. And I can't, I just can't do it. So I'm like, I might just need to like get procreate and figure it out. Yeah. I think it's worth it. And plus you can kind of start stuff in Canva and then import it into procreate and I do that with a lot of stuff and then procreate lets you mess around you know like um distort the letters to make them fit something and, mm-hmm. and that's really nice yeah how fun mm-hmm. I love it and you know it's it never hurts to like again like niche in and fine tune and and get more concise and crystallized with your your business vision and and help move it forward and you know, I think you have such a following already that people will just ride along with you and, and, you know, keep pushing. Cause it's not like, it's not like your product is changing or that you're like completely shifting gears. It's just, yeah. Like letting someone else have their name and mm-hmm. yeah. And the response has been so great. I was, I was a bit nervous about putting it out there, but mm-hmm. it's just been lovely. People yeah. are really excited about it. So, and how fun will it be to have a ruler that just says feral on it? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to make some stickers that say like feral quilter and, and that kind of stuff. So I love it. Yeah. I love it. Cause yeah, I think you have to be like, 
you know, as a millennial, you got to be a little bit feral to get through this world, (laughs) (laughs) like navigate quilting and have a foot in both kind of like the traditional being raised, you know, with these traditional ideals and like also trying to be modern at the same time. It's like, I have to, you have to be feral. Like you can't, I keep saying feral, it's feral. I keep like, I don't know what my problem is. I know the word. It's not like I'm new to it, but I like keep, I'm like feral. And my mom's like, you mean feral? I was like, yep, sure do. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Well, I love it. And yeah, I can't wait to see all the new branded stuff and I will want a ruler that says feral on it. So good. I'll send you one. Okay, great. I'm going to wait for those (laughs) because that's exciting, but oh, fun. And I just love seeing all your stuff and love seeing people use it and and have it in their shops. And it's just like an exciting thing and any way to kind of, cause like, yeah, we all use rulers, but like, why not make it cute and sparkly and like Mm -hmm. be more fun to look at while you're sewing? I don't, it doesn't have to be clear plastic, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like display in your sewing room and hang them up and stuff. Exactly. And the more people go to like pegboards on the wall and these different organizing things that doesn't tuck everything in drawers or away. It's like, of course you want your things to look cute. Like, yeah. So make them sparkly (laughs) pink and sparkles. And I love it. You know, (laughs) that's so fun. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today and for talking all about your businessy stuff. And I, you know, I just love talking business with other small business owners because there's just such a unique experience so yeah well I think all of us have just like figured it out as we go along and it's just so nice to know you're not you're not alone in that yeah absolutely for sure well if people don't know how to find you online how can they get to you I am at feral notions co on Instagram and TikTok and then my website is feralnotions.com. okay perfect I'll put links in the show notes so people can get to you in one click nice and easy And in the meantime, we will shop your rebrand and get gorgeous rulers for our quilt spaces. Oh, thank you so much. So nice to chat. Yeah, thanks.